Hopefully you never need this video, but if you do, the clock is ticking. Let's get started. Thank you, Emily Wagner. And it is my goal in this talk to distill all of neonatal resuscitation down to three steps. Number one, so warm the baby. Your baby hat, baby blankets, and a warming mat to put under the baby. Dry, obviously self-explanatory. You're gonna stimulate. This is probably more aggressive than you think a baby can handle, but really you're flicking a baby's foot, you're um, rubbing the back when you're drying it off, because this is the most important step. This is what I want you to remember, is positive pressure ventilation. Even if you have a baby with no signs of life at birth, this is where you start. You do not start with chest compressions. Your goal is to get that first breath of life into the baby. Who are you going to do this in? You're going to do this in babies with heart rates under 100, okay? Uh, if you don't have anything other than an Ambu bag, you can provide positive pre pressure ventilation that way. And this part of the algorithm ends in intubation. So if you are not having signs of life or your heart rate is not improving to greater than 100, you are going to end up intubating the baby. The third is chest compressions. And just like in adults, when you get to this part, you're giving epinephrine with it. Who are you doing this in? You're doing it in babies with heart rates below 60, okay? But below 60 after you have optimized this step. You need access to give epinephrine, right? So your options are, so NRP, while it's a very complicated algorithm, it really can be distilled down into these three basic steps. So we're gonna cut and clamp the cord um, and then take the baby over to our resuscitation area. Hopefully that is a warmer, but if you don't have a warmer again, you're gonna take a hot pad if you have it, crack it, put it under the infant. Uh, you can take your blanket and uh, you're gonna warm and dry at the same time, right? So I'm flipping the baby over, I'm rubbing the back pretty aggressively, I'm drying all these surfaces off, I'm flicking the foot, I'm really trying to make this baby mad so they take their first breath of life, okay? If you've got a hat, um, another thing to do up front that blocks baby's airways is to suction and you do mouth, nose, and then you can position the airway into sniffing position. And now we're gonna to go to positive pressure ventilation, which we would use if this baby's heart rate is below 100 or not breathing on their own. There's a couple ways to check heart rate. You can listen or you can palpate right here. This is just an infant Ambu bag. Now this is contrary to recommendations for NRP, but you are probably gonna grab what you can. You're gonna hook this up to your wall oxygen. So they're gonna make sure that your mask is the appropriate size for an infant. They have infant masks and it should read that. If you have a small baby, you might need a preemie mask, which they also make. The um, important thing is the positive pressure. And then separate from adults, there's a couple extra pieces on here. So this is the, how you determine what the inspiratory pressure that you are going to deliver is. So you're aiming between 20 and 30 for your, for your inspiration. And then this right here is a peep valve and you wanna just start at five, okay? So you're gonna make sure you have a good seal. You can use, little babies really don't need a lot of pressure. And then you're gonna deliver breaths and you're, it's in a waltz pattern for positive pres pressure ventilation. So it's breathe two, three, breathe two, three, breathe two, three, breathe. And then you can suction again. So again, mouth and then nose. Uh, you can open your mouth, and get a nice sniffing position. If those things are not working and you've tried 30 more seconds of positive pressure ventilation, then you would go ahead and intubate the baby. And again, for this baby, intubation is just as, if not more important than chest compressions. So once we get to the chest compression uh, piece of the algorithm, which is indicated when the heart rate is below 60, then there's a few ways to do it. And it's gonna be one and two and three and breathe, one and two and three and breathe, one and two and three and breathe, one and two and three and breathe. Access for epinephrine can be provided a few ways. Scalp peripheral, you can do an IO with your pink needle here, and you can go um, at, on the tibia like you would in an adult. Um, or if you have the umbilical catheter kit, note that there's one vein and two arteries. If you give yourself a nice clean cut with a scalpel, usually these vessels can present themselves. 